All right, today we're discussing saving Nigeria's economy. Joining us online to unpack all of these is Victor Owunna, who is a financial expert and business analyst. Welcome, Victor, to the program. Thank you so much for having me. All right, thank you very much, Victor. Now, we have seen a foreign portfolio investor call by the Apex Bank to attract foreign investors into the country. What do you make of this? I think that is very impressive. Like I said, this, the, the current CBN governor is really bent on, uh, he's bent on making sure that things improve. And I think he has the support from the federal government. So he's doing everything possible to make it work. You listen to what he said. He said that he was going to, they're going to go out to get more you know, foreign investors. And the president already in the UAE meeting talking about foreign investors. So uh, when, when you look at um, our, our, recently we had, uh, the OMO treasury bills going for about 17%, which brought in a whole lot of foreign inflows by foreign investors. But this is really, this is called, in economic terms, it's called hot money, right? So it comes in and within a short space of time, six months, nine months, it goes out. So um, within this short term period, we're going to see a whole lot of foreign inflows, which is very, very critical to help the economy. Um, and I think that's what we're seeing, which means that the policies are working short term, but I'm, I'm someone who tries to look at the long-term impact, even though short-term is actually very key. Um, seeing the, the fact that our treasury bills are selling, our bonds are becoming more attractive for foreign investors. Because, of course, local investors are not very excited with the bonds and treasury bill rates, looking at the current inflation at 30%. But then for foreign investors, when they compare to their own country's interest rate for their you know, bonds and treasury bills, they definitely want to come to Nigeria uh, because the interest rates are up and then they are going to see good returns for their money. Uh, okay, so while trying to bring, attract these foreign investors, the CBN raised the interest rate uh, to 22.75%. 20, uh, what does this mean for local businesses in the country? Well, thank you so much for that question. I think for local businesses, um, in the short term, it's going to be a hard time for them. Let's be very honest, because um, for any local business to operate, they need to be serviced with loans. You know, most of these businesses run with loans, and, 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 you know, the real sector as well runs with a lot of loans to actually uh, carry out economic activities. And if with the current interest rate on loans by banks, which is 22.75%, and mind you, that is just the benchmark. For some banks, they are going to go above that. We're going to be looking at rates anywhere between 30 to 35%. And businesses are going to really halt operations. You, you will start to see that in the coming months. Most businesses will not be able to carry out business activities but then here is the problem because you want to stabilize an economy with high inflation you have to increase interest rates but when you increase interest rates it means that it's going to affect economic growth and so they are like two evils right so the cbn is confident that when they bring down inflation rates then we can start to deal with economic growth so the cbn is very um they, they are aware that we're going to see local businesses struggle that's for sure but then i'm sure they are looking for ways they can First and foremost, take down the big, the, 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 you know, the, the, uh, the elephant in the room and then um, look at the economic growth as time goes on. And I believe that in the short term, uh, local businesses, be sure that they will suffer. They will have to go through a whole lot or look for other alternative access to loans and credit. But then um, I hope that long term, this is going to be better for the economy and we'll see some growth in the future. There's been some arguments that this particular uh, action is you know, t killing one evil to create a bigger one, or that it's a gamble. What, what do you think of this? I agree. I, I sincerely agree. It's actually a gamble. And every economy gambles, you know, every, every um, country, when it comes to uh, the economy facing certain headwinds, they have to gamble it out. Because if they, don't take, if they don't put out a policy and see how it works, then they are even faced with a bigger problem. When you look at the U.S., 2020 trillions of dollars were printed out and given as free money. And that led to inflation grew from less than uh, 2% to over 9%. And over the past three years, they've been able to bring it down back to below 3%. So um, with the printing that has taken place over the years before the current administration, that has played a part in the inflation. And so um, I think that it is necessary that the government and the CBN takes this route. Of course, they are aware, like I said, that it's going to affect economic growth because another problem is that the local businesses might not be dealing with the dollar, but then because of the increase in logistics and other areas, 
the prices of goods will still be high. There will still be inflation. It will still linger a while. We may get to see stagflation, which is slow economic growth with the presence of inflation. So th there is so much work that Dr. Yemi Cardozo needs to do with, uh, with his team in CBN. And I just hope that um, some of these policies that are rather very, very, very harsh, in my opinion, would, would yield some short-term results so that we can actually see that he's working. And then we can be hopeful that uh, further policies would do, would do the job required. Uh, Victor, I am, you know, gambling is, it could go one way, it could go the other way. Uh, yeah. Long-term impact, long-term results, yes. But then at this point of, in this country right now, in the state we are in right now, shouldn't we be making definite decisions and definite moves that we know and are sure that would yield positive results for the country? I believe that we should be making definite moves. I believe that the CBN is very intentional. And uh, I believe that they have, they have the wherewithal, they have the portfolio to make such decisions that will definitely improve the economy. But you have to consider the fact that this is a new administration. And for the most part, we, we have a transition problem in Nigeria. So the previous administration did not transition properly, did not make the books over, uh, open for everyone to see. There was no communication. And so, like you're aware, the CBN governor came into office and started talking about how we had no money in our reserves and all that. Nobody came in. So uh, we, we would definitely would have to give them time to, to really, you know, put some policies out there, see the impact. And as you know, even with some policies they put out before, they had to, you know, retreat. They initially wanted to ban all of them. They wanted to take out all the BDCs. But then they looked at it and said, you know what? But no, let's, let's calm down. Let's give some their license. Let's limit how much they can, they can trade in the market and et cetera. So um, definite policy is very, very important. But how much definite can you be when the economy is struggling with inflation, struggling with poverty, struggling with security, struggling with low exports? So big problems. And, and I really it goes out to the Senate, goes out to the federal government because it's going to, to be work and, and we have a kind of impatience. Um, the, the, the impatient because we've had so much, and then we hear just, just we want, want to, and if that action with the results in the market, then that becomes a bigger problem. All right, Victor. Now, the CBN governor, Yemi Kadoso, recently announced plans to clear the remaining forex backlog, which is almost reaching two billion dollars stressing on the creation of reforms to addressing foreign exchange market issues, which is one of the reasons for all these activities by the Apex Bank. How would you measure the progress made by the CBN so far? In yeah, I think that, yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. I think clearing the backlogs, the FX backlogs, very, very important. In fact, one of the major major um, areas that I would love to give kudos to the governor because if you look at the volume, the volume of back we had, foreign airline companies, foreign international organizations who were domiciled in Nigeria couldn't even repatriate their funds, you know, and this brought, this obviously discourages foreign investors. So if you look at the strategy, uh, the, the body language of the CBN uh, governor and his team, what they want to do is to first and foremost encourage foreign investors. So that's why you can see interest rates going up. You can see uh, clearing of FX backlogs. All these things are driven foreign investments because they believe that the more we have foreign investments, the more the Naira can you know, do well and the more the economy can better. But the challenge I, I, I have here is that even though you are focusing on um, clearing FX backlogs and making sure that uh, people don't play around the foreign exchange in Binance and BDCs, we have a problem, which is, the open market, that's the, the local businesses out there, there is still inflation. And this, by increasing interest rate alone, is not the solution because a lot of people are already on the poverty line. We have close to, you know, 80 million Nigerians, you know, um, in multidimensional poverty. So all this clearing of FX backlogs and limiting foreign exchange trades and all that, for me, like you mentioned, um, I think is also a short-term fix. And we want to see more policies driven towards actual economic growth that would alleviate the poverty line, that would help to, you know, bring people out of poverty. Because that is really what, Niger the, uh, you know, common Nigerians are faced with, poverty, insecurity. And if we just clear FX backlogs, stop the changes, clear Binance from the way, prevent people from trading cryptocurrencies, 
that does not solve the problem. That does not solve the problem of poverty. That does not solve the problem of insecurity. And if we don't focus on these things, then all what we're doing is just going to be putting up the shiny object out and so that people can, the foreign guys can do a good job. So let's, let's come in. But when they come in, then they see that what's on the ground is a totally different ball game. And this can further discourage them from coming in again. All right, Victor. Now, at the end of the day, we need to consider the lives of everyday Nigerians in the real sector. Mm -hmm. Because uh, the everyday Nigerian mm -hmm. has blamed the, the economic woes of the nation on the volatility in the FX market. As a financial expert that you are, uh, are you confident that we are on the right path in solving all of these FX issues? Uh, I would be very honest with you. I think that, first and foremost, the CBN... Uh, governor and the CBN as well. And of, of course, also the Ministry of Finance, they have to come together. I'm not very uh, confident in the policies driven towards bringing down inflation. And I've, because I've personally not seen enough policies driven towards economic development. I've not seen policies driven towards local production. I've not seen policies driven enabling local businesses to, you know, incentives for local businesses. People can't go to their farms and if the CBN continues on this path, then, to be honest with you, we are not likely to see sustained economic growth. What we are going to just see is, for the short term, we'll just see some improvements here and there from the Forex and all that. But then, actual economic growth, we're not going to see that. In the coming months to years, we're just going to see, you know, the, the, of course, like I said, 2013 till 2021, 400% devaluation. From 2021 till this moment I'm speaking to you, close to another 400% devaluation. So, you can't, you can't really just attack, um, you know, uh, inflation by, by, you know, halting forex transactions and halting BDCs. That is not going to lead to economic growth because there is nobody, um, you know, putting in attention into the, into the local market, into, into agriculture and other sectors of the economy that would, would boost economic growth. So I think that is what we need to see. And I hope that the CBN and the, the you know, the monetary agencies and other other agents of the government come together to really improve these policies and make sure that they drive policies towards other parts of the economy, other sectors to drive economic growth. All right, Victor, let's talk about Tinubu's, the president's visit to Qatar. Uh, you know, uh, Egypt and uh, the UAE recently reached an agreement with a total investment of $150 billion against the formerly recorded $35 billion. Do you think Nigeria can get as much from the UAE, just like Egypt, with all of these moves? I think that, um, of course, Nigeria, if you look at our GDP, if you look at um, you know, the potential of the economy, definitely we'd want to say that um, uh, the UAE would look at these indicators and they would say, okay, yes, let's come in, let's do business, because long term we can, we can definitely see economic growth. But comparing it with, you know, Egypt and other countries, I think it's going to be difficult to really say whether we can access that much, you know, um, um, investments from these foreign organizations or from these countries. If you look at our foreign debt, our both foreign and local debt, we're looking at somewhere around $113 billion, which is about $87 trillion. Naira. And that's, that's a lot. And this we paid back with interest. So, we are, a con we are a country just going into debt again and again, again and again. And we can't obviously continue like this because what we are going to do is that from one administration to another is going to be from one transfer of debt to another. Our debt grew from 2021 till now by over 75%. And so with some of this, you know, um, uh, of course, it's, uh, you can applaud the president going out to get these foreign investors to look into the country but if we continue accessing so much inflows that are, that are debt, you know, it's not really going to be helpful for the economy. So even if they're going to give us so much money, we are not supposed to. And of course, we have to also look at the money coming in and being used for economic development and not going into, you know, private pockets and all that. We have to look at not just drawing this interest, not just getting in foreign, you know, reserves and foreign inflows, but using them for the right purposes. That's really what it's meant for. And I hope that, uh, I mean, UAE can look at us and say, okay, you know, uh, because this is not the first time they are investing in Nigeria. So we want to look at them and say, oh, please just take a second chance and please come and invest in the country. And like I said, this, this request that the president is going out for is in line with the increase in the interest rate. It's also in line 
with policies from the IMF because the IMF is paying close attention to our economy. And then if we're not following through with what they are demanding of us, then we can't see this foreign inflow. So I am very hopeful that they would consider and bring in as much inflows as possible, but it has to be driven towards economic development and local production. Victor, you just mentioned a very vital point now, talking about the IMF, you know, and how they are influencing the policies that runs this country. Mm -hmm. uh, well, one would say it is because of these loans that they keep giving and, and you know, EU gives the money, can detect the policies that you'll be running. What is, what is your take on these influence that is being gotten from IMF? Is it, is it good at, at all in any way? Um, long, term, long term for me, it's not a good thing because the more they give us, they dole out these funds to us, they give us this money, the more they have control over our economic decisions, our political decisions and otherwise. So even though we cannot, you know, we, we, the government can't just go and start printing money to solve their problems, but that will lead to hyperinflation, if not recession, you know. But then um, we are, I, would, I wouldn't say that we are caught in a very, very, you know, uncomfortable position as an economy. And that is why the IMF is, is dictating what we do with our policies. And they've been paying very close watch to every single policy that we've been making. And they've also been influencing the policies. And you can't do much. Look, take a look at Ghana and how, you know, they defaulted on their, on their debt. And that was really, that devastated the economy for a while. Inflation went to about 50-something percent before coming down to, to 30 percent thereabout. So when the IMF is influencing your decisions, you have to be very careful because you will not be considering the, 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 uh, the population. You will not be considering the average Nigerian. Rather, you would want the IMF to see you in a good light. And the IMF seeing you in a good light does not, does not correlate to economic growth from the grassroots level, does not correlate to local production. I've not seen the IMF talk about local production. I've not seen the IMF talk about insecurity. What we've seen is the IMF talking about oh, awesome policies you're making with increasing interest rates, but they might not be paying attention to the fact that the increase of interest rates is affecting local businesses. And I mean, for them, that is what happens in developing countries. But we can't compare ourselves with developing countries. We have to mirror our policies in line with a developing a nation like Nigeria and also try to be very considerate to the population that the, you know, the teeming population that we have. Yeah, talking about how they are influencing the decisions and policies that we are running with. We just saw the power minister talk about uh, removing subsidy on electricity just after the, mm. we have removed subsidy on the petrol. And it's such a sad situation that we are in Nigeria right now that uh, we keep getting influences, external influences from all of these Bretton Woods organizations. It's so sad. Uh, the, uh, that we are at this point in the country. But just to veer off from the main discussion a bit, the president, while in Qatar, made a statement that investors can report to him directly if bribes are demanded from them. Now, some analysts have argued that the president is just trying to be transparent, while others say that that statement only demarcates the country. What do you think, Victor? I, I would love to lean on the part of uh, demarketing the country because, um, I mean, when you go to a foreign, uh, you know, you go to a, a country like the UAE and you tell them that, um, bring it to me, I'm going to take a look at, I'm going to, I'm going to be there to make sure that everything is organized properly. You know, it kind of sends a signal to them that lack of trust in the system, there is lack of trust in the economy. And truthfully, we have to be very honest, there is lack of trust in the government from Nigerian perspective. So. Um, going out to make a statement like that communicates a lack of trust. But of course, you would expect the UAE not to even look at that from that angle. They will probably just be looking at the fact that, okay, you know what, the number one citizen of the country is promising us that our investments are safe. And if any problem comes up, you can go and hold him accountable. So that would be their focus. They don't really mind if you are demarketing your country. After all, uh, I mean, uh, they all know that Nigeria is a developing nation and Nigeria needs their support. So uh, they will just focus on how they can give them their support and also focus on how they can get, you know, compounded returns on that support that they, they give us and emphasis on compounded returns. <laughs> I was hoping that you were not going to say they all know Nigeria is a country that gives bribe, <laughs> Victor. But anyways, that's on, the light hand. <laughs> that's on the light hand notes. Now, these two countries, Qatar and Nigeria, same mineral resources, talking about a mineral resource, talking about crude oil. What do you think is the difference between 
uh, these two countries because one is at the doorstep of the other trying to solicit for investment. I mean, this is very interesting to see. It just tells even it, it tells UAE that we are not being very intentional with um, our resources, our mineral resources, our you know crude. We are not intentional with how we are really um, you know uh, taking advantage of them because. If you look at UAE the past 50, 60 years, they were not where they are today, but because of intentional policies, because of good transitioning of governments, you can see the growth over the years. UAE is now one of the top world, uh, you know, tourism attract, tourist attractions, you know. So when, when we look at Nigeria, also an oil producing nation, you know, coming for assistance from an oil producing nation, it does not really tell well. It just tells that we are not doing our homework properly. And, and of course, since they know that they are also oil producing, what they can do is that whatever aid that they are giving us, they would find a way, uh, not sure of that, but they will find a way to tie it to more access to our resources because they know that we have it. They know that we have, you know, we have a very good, you know, um, uh, um, what's it called now? We have very good storage of these resources. And so, if they if we come to them they will say okay you know what that's fine uh, we can do business you're all you're producing we just go and check if you have enough you know enough in your bank we can come and and do business with you and take advantage of it in the long run to be honest most of these countries they are not necessarily interested in your economic growth they are just interested in how they can improve their own economy by leveraging other investment routes we have to be very honest and so that's why some countries go to get euro bonds and all that but the point is as an oil producing country going to an oil producing country for loan, that is that is that is a very funny situation to find yourself in. But again, it's just it's just a mirror to what happened in the previous administration and how the current administration is trying to correct some of these things. It's not it's not very good when you look at it from the optics. But I hope that things change in the coming years. I really do hope that things change because the lack of trust in the system is too much. All right, uh, Victor. Just to wrap up the show now, I know you have. Uh, made a lot of points, but what are the immediate steps that we can begin to take as a country to stabilize the economy amidst the current challenges that we are facing? I think the first thing we need to do as a country is to look for a way to stimulate local production. That, that's, that has been the major challenge in the Nigerian economy. We don't produce enough. We are dependent a lot on export, on importation, and it's not even a bad thing to import. But the problem is that we need things that we can produce, but we don't have incentive for production. The farmers can't go to the farm because of insecurity. This, this is something that has plagued the country for close to 10, 15 years. And if this continues, then what we are going to see, as we established earlier, is that we're going to just see short-term fixes here and there, hot money coming to the economy, go back. We're going to see dirty floating going on. But then long term, we would not see economic growth. Trust me, if the CBN stops at just sending Binance away and stopping uh, BDCs and all that, we will still see the Naira devalue if there is no intentional incentive going into local production. So the first thing that the CBN is, or the federal government needs to do is to solve insecurity, find a way to solve insecurity, find a way to bring in a lot of supply of food because our, our food inflation is... Food in food, yeah, our CPI is driven a lot by food inflation. And if people are hungry and they can't find food, you're going to see a lot of fraudulent activities go on. They'll be kidnapping. So you see how this thing spirals into different challenges. So it's not just bringing down um, um, the interest rate, sorry, the exchange rate, and trying to get in more forex inflows by going to countries to get you know, investors, but solving what's on the ground. There is insecurity. There is lack of local production. We have foreign exchange issues and all these things is bringing about a lack of trust. We also have capital flight. People are leaving the country to other countries. So we don't even have the, the, the mental resources now enough to solve these issues that we have. And local producers are not even interested in going ahead with their business. Young people are not interested in starting up businesses because if you look at some of the uh, restrictions given for you know, new businesses who want to enter into the market like BDCs having close to 2 billion Naira as their capital requirement and businesses who want to come into the tech industry having over a million dollars as their capital requirement. It doesn't really encourage, you know, local production. It doesn't encourage a lot of, you know, production from the inside. And when that continues to happen, 
you will just see that everything just will just revolve a bit in them uh, you know for the coming months things will just be looking like they're getting better and then when you now look at it from a long-term perspective you'll see that really nothing much has been done so we can only hope we can only trust that the government can really do their homework and then of course gain the support of nigerians and really start to do what we expect them to do